Mrs. Bell, I'm sorry. Sarah. Travis is a good man. He didn't deserve to be taken from his home, from his family in the middle of the night. No, he didn't. But Sarah, did Travis ever mention any problems he was having? Maybe someone that had a grudge against him? No. Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be personal. It could be a work-related thing, financial, a competitor, or even an ex-employee that knew where the safe was. <laughs> Look, we hear that there were some threats made against the building site where Travis was working. Yeah, uh, that would be, um, uh, Red Eye. Red Eye? Yeah, he sent a few letters and made a few phone calls of complaint. I think he was some kind of activist or something. I don't, I don't know. Travis doesn't like to talk about business at home. OK, Desmond Reed, a.k.a. Red Eye. Now, we need him a couple of years back for a fray and anti-capitalist protest. Anything since? Yeah, about six months ago, uh, some of our officers had a word with him following a complaint by Travis Bell over some abusive and threatening behaviour. Apparently, the site that Bell's working on was originally owned by the council. Red Eye decided that any redevelopment work should be council houses, but the council had other ideas. They sold the land to the highest bidder. As soon as Bell Constructions moved in, Red Eye decided to take it up with them personally. Personally? What exactly is he supposed to have said? You build it, we burn it. <sighs> yeah. Red Eye denied the accusations and we couldn't prove otherwise, so that was the last anyone heard of it until this morning. Until about 6 o'clock this morning, to be more precise. The FIO have had an initial sweep of the crime scene and they seem to think that the fire was lit between 6.30 and 7am this morning. So we're focusing on 6 o'clock as a working timeline. Yeah, CCTV from the site? No. Apparently the cameras aren't online yet, but I've got Sally pulling all the tapes for surrounding streets close to Baganza Square. Have we got an address for this, Radar? We do. Uh, Crimin have him last sighted at a squat on Alvis Road. That's only two streets away from Braganza Square. That's right, and that's why we need that CCTV ASAP. So, Will, can you liaise with Sally on that? Joe, get yourself down to the building site, speak to Eddie. Myself and Grace will go and interview Red Eye. So, I shouldn't need that CCTV one. Uh, Stuart, um, I could get a few uniform bodies to do that, and then they could talk to Will if they find anything interesting. OK, great, thanks. OK, Will, so get yourself down to St Hughes, uh, see if Sarah Bell remembers anything else. If not, wait for Travis Bell to be ready for interview. Mr. Reed. Mr. Reed. This had better be important. I just managed to drop off. A oh, busy night. DC Dow Street, DS Turner, Sun Hill. We'd like to ask you a few questions. It won't take long. Yeah, I've heard that before. Well, I'm sorry if we disturbed your beauty sleep, Mr. Reed. My name's Red Eye. What do you want? We need to establish your whereabouts between 6 and 7 a.m. this morning. Why? Well, because that's around the time that somebody went on a sabotage campaign in the new development down on Braganza Square. Really? <laughs> well, when you find out who it was, let me know and I'll shake him by the hand. You made certain threats against Mr Bale personally and his company's property, didn't you? No, no, that was ever proved. Yeah, but we both know that it was true. So you can see why it might be a good idea to establish your whereabouts. I was in the all-night cafe round the corner, nowhere near a building site. You're an early riser? No. The opposite. I'm an insomniac. I'm always in that cafe around that time. Go and ask them if you want. They all know me in there. I get free coffee after the second cup. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to try and get back to the beauty sleep that you just woke me from. Mr Bell, you really should be lying down. You need to get some rest. Look, thanks for your concern, but... What I need to do is get down to my building site. They set fire to one of my cabins. They also poured cement into your traps. Oh, that's insane. It's going to set us back weeks. I've got to get down there and sort it out. Travis, stop this. You're making yourself worse. I'm sorry. I just don't know what to do. Talk to the police. Help them find the people that did this to you. <sighs> I didn't see who they were. They were wearing balaclavas. One minute I was watching TV, the next... they were through the door hitting me. What did they say they wanted? Cash. I, I said I didn't have any. The search, but I didn't find anything. Is that when they took you to the site office, yeah? So they must have known who you were. I mean, they knew there was a safe, they knew that you had access to it, and uh, there might be something valuable inside it. Yeah, I... Uh, I was 
suppose I hadn't thought of it like that. And what was in the safe, Mr. Bell? It was ten grand. In cash? It was uh, payments from the developer for some uncosted work we'd done. We were just about to start hiring subcontractors. So you see, this news about the sabotage is just about the last thing I needed to hear. So I hear the red eye leave was a dead end. Yeah, it's never that simple, Will. Listen, I don't know squat about construction companies or building, but isn't ten grand in cash an awful lot of money to be leaving in a safe on the site itself? Well, I've heard of cash being left on a building site, but ten grand does seem to be excessive, yeah. Yeah, why didn't they take the jewellery when they turned over the house? Yeah. Unless it's not really a robbery. What do you think it's a setup, Sarge? Well, Travis mentioned how much the sabotage would cost in terms of the delay that it would cause. Maybe it's an insurance scam. You reckon? Well, surely Travis is a victim here. He wouldn't go as far as get himself beaten up, would he? Well, I don't know. What I do know is I need you to get down to FIU, pull Bell Construction's accounts and Travis's personal finances. Well, what exactly am I looking for, Sarge? Well, I don't know, Will. Use your initiative. I mean, you're in the Premier League now, not the Second Division. What? Is that uniform, then, Second Division? <laughs> Didn't mean it quite like that, but... Right. You want something? Well, Joe called. Eddie's got something for you. That's great. Thanks, Mel. Don't worry about him. It's making me feel like Sunday League all day. Eddie, what you got? Well, for starters, I got these lovely indigestion tablets, courtesy of the even lovelier DC Masters here. Now, they're gel, so they're chewy, but they're minty fresh. Now, now try one. I don't think the sergeant's really in the mood, Eddie. Just get on with it. Right, well, we got a footprint in cement. Now, there's no knowing if they belong to the perpetrator, but it's quite likely. Anything else? You've been working on the assumption that the site was trashed at 6.30 this morning. But we found this in one of the skips. Now, this isn't quick-set in cement, the sort of thing you'd use for fencing posts or whatever. No, it's masonry mortar. And there's no way that would set that firm if it had been poured after 6. So what time was it poured? No later than 4, I'd say. Well, that gives us the whole new time frame, then. I thought you said the fire didn't start till half 6. No, it didn't. But there's evidence that it might have been activated earlier. An industrial heater covered with flammable materials. And this lump of molten plastic in the socket was once a time switch, unless I'm much mistaken. Well, this puts red eye right back in the frame, you know. Oh, you don't know the half of it. Smithy rang. Guess who was caught on CCTV near Burganza Square at 3.53 this morning? Now, that's one of those rhetorical questions again, isn't it? That's great. Right, Joe. You need to go and search Red Eye's house with a uniform and interview him. I'm going to get up there, get the financials and the company reports and give them to Will. What for? I don't know yet. Just a hunch. Maybe nothing, but at least it'll give Will something to do. Lighten up on him, Sarge, you know. We all know what it's like to want to make an impression. Excuse me. One of your fellow officers rung me and asked me for that. I'm James Lynch, Brennan Security. That's Dave Tucker's road, sir. He was working last night. Well, Dave Tucker didn't do a very good job. <laughs> yeah, well, you get what you pay for in this business. Unfortunately, Mr Bale didn't think it necessary to pay for 24-hour coverage. I'd say he regrets that now. Well, he's not the only one. This sort of thing doesn't do much for my business reputation. Well, sir, luckily for you, my colleague's about to go pick up a suspect. For the benefit of... I'm now showing Mr Reed a CCTV still of you on Claydon Street, which is just off Braganza Square, at 3.53 this morning. Any thoughts? I've got chronic insomnia, all right? I often wander the streets at night. The state of society might not keep you awake, but it does me. Oh, well, what keeps me awake, Mr Reed, is crime and people who lie to me. So, once again, are you saying you were nowhere near that building site in the last 24 hours? That is exactly what I'm saying. What about your left foot? What's that supposed to mean? For the benefit of the tape, I'm now showing Mr Reed exhibit JM1. These trainers were found at your squat. The left shoe has traces of cement, which is a direct match to a footprint found at the crime scene. Concrete evidence. Literally. No comment. You're done, Red Eye. You cooked. But this criminal damage is nothing compared to the charges you're going to cop for. Assault. Abduction, robbery. You're looking at 10 to 15 years. 
Just how far are you prepared to go for your cause? Red Eye.